Hi, this is Joanne, and I'm here today to highly recommend a book called Microcosm by Carl Zimmer, and the subtitle is E. coli and the New Science of Life, uh, The Streaked Plate. I've done many, many of those. Um, so, it took me a while to decide to go ahead and read Carl Zimmer's book. Of course, I've been a fan of his writing in magazines and newspapers for quite some time, but I've never read any of his books, basically because I'm a biologist. And this book especially had me in a quandary. I'm like, now why would I want to read something I spent eight years of my life studying through textbooks and labs and exams and lectures, right? Um, and and in essence, everything in that book is the fabric of my being as a biologist. Everything I teach my students is laid on this backdrop of what we have discovered through E. coli. Now E. coli has been the most amazing model, this beautiful, prolific model, this bacteria that multiplies rapidly, that is easy to access and easy to manipulate. And we learned a lot about DNA and RNA and protein synthesis and metabolism because of our studies with E. coli. So for the most part, E. coli is not um, pathogenic. We do have some pathogenic strains, but they're pathogenic to us, but maybe not to cattle. So there's a lot we can understand about um, life in general from E. coli, and I think that's what Carl was trying to represent through this book. He started the book by discussing the history of um, the different types of molecular things we have learned by using E. coli. And he goes on to discuss how do we um, understand communities and how do we understand the kinds of trade-offs that organisms make to survive in different environments. And uh, he discusses then uh, E. coli in our role of understanding evolution. If you go into a bookstore anymore, you probably trip over the number of evolution books that are out there. And almost every biology book printed at this time uh, happens to have a section on uh, having our defense of evolution. And that just seems appropriate. We're learning to articulate it very well. But E. coli has really helped move us along in understanding this. And of course, Carl spent some time discussing this in the book. Also in the book are some discussions of the kinds of things we can do once we have sort of gotten E. coli under our control through genetic manipulations. And some of those are uh, the using them to create drugs. Of course, there was a concern that our manipulations of the genome of E. coli would cause you know, widespread disease or something like that, but that hasn't uh, borne out to be true, but we have used it to make some amazing things like insulin that can be used uh, for people who have diabetes. Um, the book also discusses what I find very interesting, because I happen to know some students involved in this, is um, a uh, competition essentially for students called iGEM, where it's the International Genetic Engineering Machinery, where we, um, we are able to uh, genetically manipulate uh, E. coli and cause them to do things we wouldn't normally expect, like to absorb light and change colors or to have a different smell. So we, we use these type of things to sort of push forward the science a little bit and to get young people really excited about this. Now what I really loved most about this book is the fact that I knew all this stuff so well and so deeply. That reading this book to me was like floating down a river in an inner tube on a warm day that all I had to do was just sit there and take in the scenery. All I had to do was take in Carl's writing style. I didn't have to worry that I would miss out on information. The only thing I think I ever got confused on was he was describing beautifully with some imagery of um, RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase, I believe, and you know how that we have a zipper and we have scissors and things like that. And then two pages later, he he has a chart with some you know enzyme or gene name, and I was like, now why would he do that? Keep it simple, but then make it complicated. And then I went, oh, I do that too with my students, but I specifically say, by the way, 
I've been teaching you everything you need to know in a very simplified manner so that you have your basic concepts. But then I'll throw up a PowerPoint slide that shows some sort of metabolic pathway where things are feeding back and looping back and, you know, uh, crashing into each other essentially. And I'll say, I just always want you to remember that it's not as simple as you as I've been describing it. So just just know what you need to know to do what you need to do in this class, but always remember that the research behind this is much more complicated than I've been letting on. And I think that's what Carl did in his book without telling us that's what he was doing. Um, what Another thing I really liked about the book was this reminder of um, Carl Woes. Now, the evolutionary tree had uh, traditionally been divided into two branches. We have our prokaryotes who do not have a membrane-bound nucleus, and we have our eukaryotes, which is like us, prokaryotes or bacteria, that uh, eukaryotes have a membrane-bound um, nucleus, right? And uh, what Carl Woese discovered in the 70s is that, you know, there's actually some bacteria that behave more like eukaryotes. And he found this third branch of the tree called archaebacteria. Carl Woese happens to work here at the U of I, um, his research was so significant that he should probably win a Nobel Prize, but he's not because it doesn't fit into any of the recognized categories. Um, oh well, he's won lots of other prizes too. And But I have to say, I remember Carl Woese very clearly. He would be walking down the hall with his thoughts, but without an agenda, in his flannel shirt and his rumpled hair, and he would be happy to talk to anyone, including a very wide-eyed 19-year-old dressed very smartly, standing at the autoclave, collecting the supplies she had just sterilized. And he came by to me and said, so is this the latest in autoclave wear? <laughs> and then he just engaged me in a scientific discussion, you know, asking what was I doing, and then would discuss some of his work. So I'd run into him uh, by chance in that building quite often and he is always happy to talk to me. And the most memorable thing he said is something we're taking for granted now. But back more than 20 years ago, this was not commonly accepted, but that who said that evolution meant we had to become more complex? Why doesn't it mean we're becoming simpler? And actually, Carl puts that in his book. Um, not directly attributed to Carl Woese, but from Carl Woese was the first place I heard it. And it's just scientists like that that make um, students like me at the time enjoy science more and to know that, you know, these people really care that the next generation is ready to go. And, um, and I think in a way Carl is making his own, Carl Zimmer is making his own contribution to future scientists as well. Um, and of course it's entertaining all of us uh, well-educated uh, science enthusiasts too. So I'm going to highly recommend that uh, if you have not read this book, go ahead and do it because then you will really understand molecular biology and you will understand how E. coli has really set up the basis for everything that uh, a lot of us molecular biologists stand for. So thank you for listening and enjoy. Thank you. Bye.